The Youngstown State University Honors College is pleased to present Storytime from Folk Hall, the home of the Honors College, and from the homes of our alumni near and far. We hope the sharing of stories from members of the Honors community brightens your day. Hi, my name is Muhammad Khan, and I'm a senior here in Youngstown State University. Uh, my major is civil and environmental engineering, and I am doing a minor in management. So today I am here to read you stories. So our first book is Just So Thankful by Marcel Meyer. Today mom took little sister and me to the toy store. I wanted to buy this cool scooter called the Super Streak, but my piggy bank didn't have enough money. Why don't you pick something else, said mom, but I only wanted the Super Streak, it was so unfair. Little sister asked if I wanted to play tea party with her new tea set, but I told her to leave me alone because I was Still so mad. Mom said she didn't know why I was mad because I have lots of other toys. There will always be things you want but don't have, little critter, she said. What's wrong, what's important is appreciating what you do have like a family that loves you. On our way home, we saw a boy moving into the biggest house in our whole neighborhood. And guess what he was riding? The Super Streak. He had the most toys I had ever seen in my whole life. I wish I had so many toys. The new boy didn't take the bus to school like my friends and me. He got driven in a limousine. He told us his name was Holden Harrison III, but that we could call him HH. Then he showed us his cell phone. He's the only kid in school with his very own and with his very own phone and a name that just two letters. Wow, HH, I said, you're so lucky. HH invited my friends and me to come over to his house for a sleepover. We went swimming in his gigantic pool. And we watched a movie on, the, on this great big TV. We made a mess with the popcorn and the candy and the sodas. But the maid said it was okay. She cleaned it, everything up. And in morning, there was big breakfast just for us. Wow, HH, I said, you're so lucky. You get the prize in every cereal box since you don't have to share with anybody. On the way home, I told mom about all the fun we did at HH's house. Why don't you invite HH to our house, mom asked. But he might get bored since we don't have so much cool stuff to play with, I said. Mom just smiled and told me to invite him anyway. When HH came over, we played football. The dog chewed up one of his new sneakers and got mud all over him. But he didn't care. He said he had always wanted a dog. I told little sister not to bug us, but HH said it was okay. He even played tea party with her and Kitty and he never and he let her win at checkers too. When it was time for dinner, he helped me set the table even though it was my chore. And then he helped dad barbecue the hamburgers. HS said he never gets to help with dinner at his house. He didn't even mind when grandma 
and grandpa asked him tons of questions and when grandma patted him on his head he said he never sees his grandparents because they live so far away when it was time for hh to go our whole family went outside to say goodbye you're so lucky little critter hh said i wonder what he meant but then i looked around at my family and all of a sudden i knew maybe i didn't knew maybe i didn't have a super streak or a big fancy house and a me to pick up my stuff but what i did have was the best family in the whole world thank you everybody i yelled then i gave them a all a big great hug Now we're gonna read the next book, which is Dragon Love Tacos by Adam Rubin, and illustrated by Daniel Semiri. Wow, it's a uh, nice pictures. <laughs> hey kid, did you know that Dragon loves taco? They love beef tacos and chicken tacos. They really. love the big gigantic tacos and tiny little baby tacos as well why do dragons love taco maybe it's the smell from the sizzling pan maybe it's the crunch of the crispy tortillas maybe it's a secret either way if you want to make friends with dragons tacos are key hey dragon why don't you love tacos so much but wait As much as dragons love tacos, they hate spicy salsa even more. They hate spicy green salsa, spicy red salsa. They hate spicy chung salsa and spicy smooth salsa. If the salsa is spicy at all, dragons can't stand it. Why do dragon dragons hate spicy salsa? Well, just one drop of hot sauce makes a dragon's ear smoke. Just one single speck of hot pepper makes a dra- dragon snort sparks. Spicy salsa gives dragons the tummy troubles, and when dragons get the tummy troubles, oh boy! If you want to make tacos for dragons, keep the toppings mild. Add tomatoes to it, lettuce, cheese. these all good toppings for tacos for dragon hey dragon do you feel about how do you feel about spicy taco toppings dragon loves parties they love costume parties and pool parties they lo- they like big gigantic par- parties with accordions they like tiny little parties with charades why do dragons love parties maybe it's the conversion maybe it's the dance maybe it's the comforting sound of a good friend's laughter the only thing dragon love more than parties or tacos is taco parties taco parties with a lot of tacos if you want to have some dragon over for a party uh, over for a taco party you will need a bucket of tacos and loads of tacos the best way to judge is to get a boat and fill the boat with tacos that's about how many tacos dragon needs for a taco party after all dragon loves tacos Hey dragon, are you excited for the big taco party? Just remind, just remember, tra- dragons hate spicy salsa. Before you host your taco party with dragons, get rid of all the spicy salsa. In fact, bury the spicy salsa in the backyard so the dragons can't find it. It's a good thing you got rid of all that spicy. Wait a second. What are those green things in the salsa? You didn't read the fine print. It's tomato mild salsa. 
dragons, listen to me. Do not eat those tacos, those little green specks in the salsa. Those are jalapeno peppers. They are super spicy. I know you love tacos, dragons, but you are not gonna love those tacos. Do not let those dragons eat those tacos. Crunch, crunch, crunch. And then dragons started like spitting fire everywhere. It's too late. Everything is destroyed. Why would dragons why, why would dragons help you rebuild your house? Maybe they are good Samaritans. Maybe they feel bad for wrecking it. Maybe they are just in it for the taco break. Thank you all. So this was our book. And this was the first book I read. It's just so thankful by Mercer Meyer. And it was nice seeing you all today. Bye-bye. Hello, my name is Ashley Keefe, and today I'll be reading to you The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. There's the little egg right there on the leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. There he is, right there, the little caterpillar. Let's see. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through an apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. This one very hungry caterpillar. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. This one very hungry caterpillar, I must say. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. I bet. That's a lot of food for a little caterpillar. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now, he wasn't hungry anymore, but he wasn't a little, a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house, called a cocoon, around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then, he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and... He was a beautiful butterfly. That's a lot of colors. Oh, oh that's it. <laughs> and that was the Very Hungry Caterpillar. I hope you all enjoyed. Hello, today I'm going to be reading to you Mr. Seahorse by Eric Carl. Mr. and Mrs. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea. Mrs. Seahorse began to wiggle this way and with that. It's time for me to lay my eggs, she said. Can I help? asked Mr. Seahorse. Oh, yes, thank you, said Mrs. Seahorse, and she laid her eggs into a pouch on Mr. Seahorse's belly. I'll take good care of our eggs, said Mr. Seahorse. I promise. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by a group of trumpet fish happily in a patch of reeds. Before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Stickleback? asked Mr. Seahorse. I just built a nest and, and right away, Mrs. Stickleback laid her eggs into it. Now I am taking good care of them until they hatch. 
Keep up the good work, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam on his way. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by a lionfish hiding behind a coral reef. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Tilapia? asked Mr. Seahorse. I know, I know. Oh, wait. <laughs> Mr. Tilapia couldn't answer. His mouth was full of eggs. I know, I know, said Mr. Seahorse. Mr. Mrs. Tilapia laid her eggs. Now you are taking good care of them until they hatch. Mr. Tilapia nodded his head. You must be very happy, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam on his way. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by several leaf fish hidden among the seaweed. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Curtis? asked Mr. Seahorse. Perfectly fine, replied Mr. Curtis. Mrs. Curtis laid her eggs and I have stuck them on my head. Now I am taking good care of them until they hatch. You're doing a good job, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam on his way. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by a stonefish hidden behind a rock. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Pipe? asked Mr. Seahorse. Couldn't be better, replied Mr. Pipe. Mrs. Pipe laid her eggs along my belly. Now I am taking good care of them until they hatch. You should feel proud of yourself, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam on his way. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Bullhead, said, asked Mr. Seahorse. Tip top, replied Mr. Bullhead. Mrs. Bullhead laid her eggs and the eggs hatched. Now I'm babysitting. You're doing a fine job, said Mr. Seahorse, and swam on his way. The time had come for the seahorse babies to be born. Mr. Seahorse wiggled and twisted this way and that. At last, the babies tumbled from Mr. Seahorse's pouch and swam away. One baby turned around and tried to come back into the pouch. Oh no, said Mr. Seahorse. I do love you, but now you are ready to be on your own. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this book. And uh, as always, go Penguins. So my name is Sharia Peaks and I am a first year student and I'm majoring in biology. And the first book I'll be reading today is The Minor Sword. Thank you for watching Storytime, a new program designed to help with literacy and learning. Brought to you by the Honors College at the Youngstown State University. The YSU Honors College provides highly motivated students with opportunities to deepen their learning and develop to their full intellectual and cultural potential. Students also contribute to the community by service projects such as Storytime. The college is committed to creating an environment welcoming to and supportive of students from diverse backgrounds. Storytime airs Mondays at 6 p.m. See you next time.